All right, Shalom, Shalom. I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. I want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations to you, elect Akiam, across the four winds of this earth, pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. Okay, what you see here on the screen is, um, I don't want to call it a stand up comedy, but it's Dave Chappelle's most recent stand up. And it was something that was um, published straight to YouTube, okay? And it's about two weeks old, but I had checked it out, and um, the spirit's on me to just do a, um, to just do a lesson based on um, the energy, all right, the energy of this um, stand-up that Dave Chappelle had, okay? Now, when you watch this, all right, or naturally for those who might be into stand-up who have seen Dave Chappelle's stand-ups, he's a comedian, you know, and usually he's up there telling jokes, making people laugh. And that's what a lot of people expected when this randomly had came out. But when you actually sit down and watch this, it's not really nothing funny about it. All right. Um, he titled it 846. All right. And he talks about that was the time that he was actually born. But the reason why he titled this was because that was how long that Edomite's knee was on the neck of um, George Floyd, who was killed, who was a product of police brutality a few weeks back okay so dave chappelle naturally is just um harping on the the so-called racial injustice that's taking place here within america you know and um and he ain't joking you know when you watch this here that's why i wanted to do a a, a lesson on the energy of this stand-up because when you watch this he's not in the state of joy he's not joking more so, it's a state of lamentation that he's in, okay? And what I wanted to go into doing a commentary on this, on this stand-up he did, when you watch this, this is just another point to prove that our people have no comfort, okay? It don't matter how much money that you make. It don't matter how successful that you are here in America, all right? If you ain't walking in the will of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, who is the name who the world ignorantly calls God and Yahweh Shai being the name of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. If you're not walking with that energy, if you're not following that tune, that frequency, you're done. You're gone. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how much dainties you have to comfort you on this side. They can only do so much. All right. And this is an example of somebody who would be considered successful. OK, but again, he's harping and he's lamenting. On the fact that you so-called Negroes are getting gunned down by the police, okay? You're getting you're getting racially profiled, okay? You're always the the first fired, last hired, okay? You in the state of um you in the state of um, humility, all right? You being humiliated out here in America, and when you really look at how you how you Israelites were brought over here, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, how you starting with you Negroes. Mm -hmm. How you were brought over here with slavery. I mean, it only makes sense that these type of things will still be happening here in 2020. All right. This place was raped off of bloodshed, murder. OK, and it's still here today. All you see here is the fruit that budded from what was sown already. OK, so it really is surprising, which we understand. But, you know, a lot of people are surprised in the fact that you Israelites can't get no equality over here. OK, when the Lord had never wanted us to have equality with the heathen, he always set us up to be over the heathen. But because we had rebelled against our Lord, we had went off against his laws, his statutes and his commandments. All right. He had placed us in the hands of the oppressors, starting with the nation of Edom, who is the so-called white man, according to the scriptures. OK, now I'm going to read this verse here and I don't intend on this lesson being long at all. But it's in the book of Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter. And I'm going to start from the top. OK. And it says, so I return and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. All right. Now, the thing about it is, was King Solomon speaking on one that was oppressed at that time? All right. Remember, he was a king and he was in rulership when he had uh, wrote when he had wrote these uh, letters, these proverbs. OK. So he's really speaking on the fact that he knew the Israelites were going to go into slavery. Okay. He knew according to the law that it was written that we were going to be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. 
And also he understood that if he was to go off, the Israelites were going to go into captivity. And he definitely went off when he lived at Solomon around that time. Okay. So what he's speaking on, all right, is, the, is his people being in captivity. And we see the product of that. We see that still to this day. Okay. It says, so I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. Now, when you go into this word oppression, the word there in the Hebrew is Aisha wa koyam. All right. And it says uh, oppression, extortion. And when you go into the root of that word, which is um, Aishakwa, it's to press upon, to oppress, to violate, to defraud, do violence, get deceitfully wrong. And these are all the things that happen to you Israelites. All right. You so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. This is the treatment that you've received ever since you had came over here to America. All right. And you so-called Latinos and Native Americans. This is the treatment that you've received ever since the Edomites had came over here to this land and they put a boot upon your neck. OK, everything that's been done unto us since we've been over here was done in violence. All right. This place was wrought off blood. You remember we were beaten. We were stricken. We were put in chains. We had to serve our oppressors. And don't get me wrong. This was rightfully so because we had went off against our power. We had went off against our God. So he said these were the type of results that were going to take place due to our constant rebellion. Salakia. <coughs> Salakia. Okay, so going back to this uh, stand up here titled 846, this Dave Chappelle stand up. All right, this is a product of us rebelling against the Heavenly Father. Okay, and this is the mentality, and not even just him. All right, but you also, also, you other Israelites. Hold on. But this is the this is the mentality, all right, that a lot of you Israelites have right now being in America. What in equality, what in freedom. But you don't seem to register. It doesn't seem to register in your mind that you've never been equal in the society since you since you came over here. So why should you want it now? OK, whenever you see a so-called Israelite, I'm sorry, a so-called Negro, an Israelite man get killed by the police, a so-called Latin Native American man get killed by the police. You scream for justice and you start up certain movements like Black Lives Matter, which, again, is really is really a um, BS because it's really it was really founded by some uh, homosexuals. And it's funded by George Soros, who also is the same individual whose family funds Planned Parenthood. All right. Which is really ultimately set up for the extermination. All right. Of you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. All right. This is the type of stuff that our people resort to whenever they want equality. They consider they, they, they continually tie themselves to the oppressor. OK. And that's what King Solomon's talking about. OK. So I want to jump back to this verse here and it says, and behold, the tears of such as were oppressed and they had no comforter. OK. And as you watch this documentary here. All right. This is an example of Jake having no comfort. All right. Dave Chappelle is pretty much lamenting when you watch this, when you go outside and you see Israelites, so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans marching for justice. What in peace? All right. This is an example. All right. The tears of them that were oppressed. And this is a result of having no comfort. All right. Wanting to demand a change, wanting to accept, wanting to, um, I'm sorry, ceasing to accept the reality of, um, the state of you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans here in America. All right. They still they still walking around like there's a chance for them over here in America, like they want equality, justice when this place doesn't give a dang about you. All right. Really, the elites are getting ready to be done with this whole thing and they're getting ready to kill off the majority of the Earth's population or they're going to attempt to. OK, so really what you Israelites should be doing you should really repent and turn from your evil ways. All right. Because ain't nothing going to change here in America that's going to benefit y'all. Out of all the screaming and shouting for equality and all these things, it ain't going to change. All right. And it's ultimately set up by the Heavenly Father to be so. OK. I'm going to continue this in Ecclesiastes 4. It says, and behold, the tears of such as were oppressed and they had no comforter. 
And on the side of their oppressors, there was power. All right. So on the side of our oppressors, which our oppressor right now is modern day Egyptians. All right. Which is the nation of Esau Edom, who was a so-called white man. There's power that's been given unto them. That's why you read it in the book of Job, chapter nine, verse 24. The earth is given unto the hands of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? OK, so these are those that have power right now so they can kill you Israelites off like they've been doing and walk away scots free because they've been given power. All right. And ultimately what the Heavenly Father wanted us to do was serve our captivity, serve our punishment in, the hum in a humiliated state, in a lowly state. And also too, just 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 walking and being at peace with all men. And this was the only way accepting your captivity and taking it and turning it back to the Lord. This was the way that the Lord was going to turn his face back toward us. But our people don't want to do it. OK, that's why when you read it in the book of Romans, the 13th chapter, which I'm going to get it. But it says, because remember, in Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter, it talked about the oppressors and how power was given unto them. OK, Romans 13 and one says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but the Most High. All right, and what the Apostle Paul is saying, the Most High, Yahweh, is the ultimate power. And everything that's done here, it's his will. Everything that takes place is his will. Okay? It says, for there is no power but of the Most High. The powers that be are ordained of the Most High. So Esau, Edom is a power that be. All right? He is the power that, like, people talk about the powers that be. All right, looking at the international bankers, the, the global elites, they are the powers that the Most High had set up. All right, the different kings and rulers over here in the nations that you Israelites were scattered at, which laws you have to follow and comply, as long as it isn't making you go off from the ways of the Heavenly Father, you have to follow them. All right, and our people don't want to do this. Okay, our people want to rebel, they want to do their own thing, and what takes place? Okay, you get killed. You mourn, you lament, and you wonder. And the thing about it is you wonder why these things are happening. And the reason why you wonder is because you don't have the comfort. You don't have the understanding of the why. We have the why. We have the understanding. All right. We have the common goal. We have the, the, com we have the vision that the Heavenly Father had given us, which is going to make us live. While you don't have the vision, which is going to make you continue to die. OK, and I'm going to bring out a precept after I read this here, but it's going into the vision. It says. Whosoever, therefore, resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of the most high and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Now, what does that damnation mean? Does it mean that you go inside of the earth in a different dimension and burn forever? No, it just means you get killed. All right. And a lot of you Israelites end up getting killed by the police because. You don't want to receive, you resist the ordinance that the Most High has set up. You resist the fact that the Most High has set these devils over you, all right, these modern day Assyrians over you, a hypocritical nation, talking about you Israelites, all right, he has set them over you for your punishment, and you try to fight against that. So when you get killed by the police, when you get shot in the back for running away, all right, it's your fault, okay? Now, am I saying that every single Edomite that's, that no, they're the devil, you know. So, yeah, they're going to do certain unruly acts that's going to cause people to wonder and be upset. OK, but ultimately it's due to our rebellion against the Lord. And it's beautiful that the Lord is showing us that this is the devil, man. All right. A lot of times and I ain't saying every time, but a lot of time there's racial injustice that takes place. It's a lot of times provoked by you, Jake's. All right. You provoking a devil. All right. That's why the scriptures say who shall pity a charmer. OK. And a charmer is one that pretty much plays with serpents and snakes. All right. And if you constantly tap in the head, tapping at the head of a, a viper, it's going to bite you, man. And that's what a lot of you jakes do. OK. You walk around, you know, you walk around provoking people. You get pulled over by the cops, you know, and a lot of times you're already mouthing off. And I'm not saying that's every time, but, you know, the simple thing to do is just to comply. OK, because if you don't comply, that's damnation. All right. I remember there was a, something that happened uh, from some years back by an Israelite girl named Kareem Gaines. You know, I did a lesson on that when it happened and a lot of people didn't like it, you know, but um, 
she had got killed because she had had her baby locked in the house. Oh, I will say that's the reason why. But um, she got pulled over by the police and she didn't want to um, she didn't want to comply with them. All right. So there was a long story to do where she pretty much went to her house, locked herself in there and her baby and ended up getting shot to death, you know, because she didn't want to comply. And that's just an example out of numerous examples. OK, but this is the reason why the reason why all these things are happening, because Jake has no comforter and they want to put matters into their own hand. All right. But they don't understand them putting matters in their own hands and ultimately brought you Israelites in the circumstances, in the situation that you are in right now. OK, so the best thing for you Israelites to do is repent and repenting is only something that's given unto the elect. Anyway, the elect had the vision of their transgressions, of their sins and look at the common vision or the common goal that the Lord is going to give his servants. And that's turning from your evil ways and walking in the light. All right. Following his ways. OK, seeing what's in these scriptures and walking them. All right. Following the, 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 the way in the life, which is Yahweh Shai. OK, now I said I was going to uh, end it off on one more scripture here, and this is going to be in the book of Proverbs, the 29th chapter and the 16th verse. I'm sorry. Um, hold on. The 18th verse. It says, well, there is no vision. The people perish. All right. And again, the reason why they don't have no vision, because they don't have no comforter. If they understood the comforter and had the comforter, they would understand the vision. They would understand the why, as I explained earlier. And there wouldn't be as much complaining of the oppressors and what they're doing. You would have the understanding on the why. We have the why. We're comforted. When we see Israelites get killed, you know, certain times we'd be like, damn. You know, and then you get over it real quick. Certain times you'd be like, hey, man, that's what he get. Especially if it was a wicked act that person had done. But the bigger picture is we understand the why and we have that vision. But the bulk of our people don't have that vision. They don't know the why. So they're going to constantly be led unto the grave because they don't have the understanding on the why. They're going to constantly be in a state of lamenting and, 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 and uh, mourning. All right. Of course, until the kingdom. All right. But as they're here in America, they're going to constantly be in that state because they don't understand the why. OK. It says where well, there is no vision the people perish, but he that keepeth the law happy is he. And what is that? Keeping the law ultimately just means you have the comforter. All right. So we happy. And why is that? Because we have the understanding on what's going to take place after all this is done. And it brings joy to us. All right. We know a kingdom's coming. We know why you Israelites are getting killed in the rapid rate. You're getting incarcerated at the way you're getting incarcerated. All right. Being profiled by the police. We understand why, you know, and we know that this ain't going to last forever. We ain't looking for this place to be our rest. The reason why a lot of you Israelites are in the state that you're in right now, because you are looking for rest and you want your rest to be here because you're tired of getting beat. You're tired of getting oppressed. You're tired of being the last hire first fired. You're tired of being the bottom of the totem pole. But guess what? You're going to continue to be that way until the Lord comes back. At least you repent. OK, and regardless, you're going to be that way until the Lord come back. And that's when the Lord is going to exalt the Israelites. But as you're here in America, there is no healing for Babylon. And if you ain't following the ways of the Heavenly Father, there's no healing for you neither. You're going to constantly be in a state of lamentation because you have no comforter. All right. And with that being the case, you will perish. But I'm going to end it off on that. Lord's will. This was edifying. I want to give all praise, all honor and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Chakodash. I want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations to you, elect Akim, across the four winds of this earth, pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom.